Greetings to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Alexander Ilchuk, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 Initiative Coordination Group. And we begin with the alignment. Print to, to the alignment your lower vehicles. Physical, etheric, astral, the mental. We tune to the note of own soul. And we visualize a circle of people gathering for this webinar from around the world. Seeing it as ring of radiant fire. And we link with each other with light and love connecting through space. And we connect in the group heart center. We extend our alignment to the entire group of world servers. Working everywhere in the world. In all the fields of human endeavor. And we visualize the network of light covering the entire planet. Connected with each other with inner commitment, service to the plan, to advance humanity. We extend our alignment upwards in our consciousness entering the periphery of the great ashram of Sanat Kumara, the spiritual hierarchy of the planet.
through the group heart center we connect with the heart center of the hierarchy the Christ and standing together as a part of the group of world service we sound the mantra may the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers may the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. Welcome again to our webinar today, Aquarius Solar Festival, um, and today our topic is challenges of group work, theme very aligned with the energies of Aquarius. And our guest uh, is Eva Lassen uh, from Denmark, and the webinar will be facilitated by uh, Wendy Glaubitz Figure from Canada. Welcome. The, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, um, this is Wendy, and um, I want to just give a little introduction Muted. to Eva and what she's going to be talking about. Um, today's webinar addresses the important topic of group work. And we're told in the Ageless Wisdom texts that our struggle to move along the spiritual path um, to become more self-aware and aligned with the soul is really a process to prepare us for eventual service within a discipleship group. So our presenter today is Eva Lassen from Denmark, who belonged to a group in Denmark that worked consciously over a period of 14 years to create this kind of spiritual group. Eva has written a short book that describes the challenges of this group's experience and she will share with us some of the deeply valuable understandings that the group members gained over time, often through much trial. From what I understand, um, Eva has found references to such challenges and profound guidance on the topic of spiritual group work in the very deeply thoughtful writings of Lucille Cedarcrantz, author of Nature of the Soul. Um, and Lucille has written many other books as well. So welcome, Eva. Thank you very much, Wendy. <laughs> I have been looking forward to to share this experience with all of you and I hope you will all benefit from what we have to say here today. Uh, I can of course not go through all the book so it will only be little bits here and there um, uh, to as appetizers 
and you will then be able to actually to download the the book from it's it's under handouts if you can see that on your screen uh, then you can uh, download a copy of this uh, biography as I call it but thank you Wendy for your introduction oh, you're welcome and um, can you begin by just giving us a short history of the group of, and how this uh, inspired you to um, write about the challenges of group work? Yes, uh, it would probably be a good idea to just say a few words about, uh, uh, about how this group was formed because it, this is, this is a story behind the group of people that are actually behind what we call Center for the Inner Dimensions of Life. The inner dimensions of life is the outward uh, expression. It was a service work, so to speak. And uh, what I am going to, to tell about tonight is the group that was behind this service uh, project and our endeavors to work together as an esoteric group, according to the esoteric principles that we read about in the uh, Siddhokran's uh, books, but also, of course, in the Alice Bailey's uh, books. So this is actually a story of a very dedicated group of people who worked to bring the ageless wisdom to all those who were able to respond to it and to help them find their way to the soul. So this was also the, the inner uh, purpose of uh, what we wanted to do. So the group actually started uh, in 2001 and it uh, dissolved itself in 2015. But before it started uh, in 2001 we were quite an ordinary uh, group who was uh, working in the Theosophical Association in Copenhagen it was the leader group and we did uh, the kind of work that you do in that kind of, of uh, association. We did basically the work that would make the association run, that we would have different uh, programs and activities for, for people to come and listen to. The Theosophical Association of Copenhagen was only one among other groups that together was a theoretical association. So um, apart from courses and seminars and, and other spiritual uh, subjects, we had a library, a bookstore, we had tapes and DVDs and produced radio and so on. There was a whole range of, of the main activities was the esoteric school that was developed by who is also a leading personality in the association and its board. So what happened in 2001? Well, up to 2001 we had actually started to uh, try to work as an esoteric group. So we had started meditating together. And um, this was a new endeavor, uh, and we were just in the beginning of finding out what uh, what all this meant. The first thing that happened then is that um, it came to a break between Liz Brunset, who was the leader, and the Theosophical Association. So the board and the assistants that that uh, that helped uh, making everything come out in the world. Uh, and the ordinary members of the association, they were split into fractions. And uh, those who followed Nils, and I was obviously one of them, uh, formed a new association, Esoteric Center in Copenhagen. And we continued our work there. The Theosophical uh, Association of Copenhagen also continued their work, and they still exist today, and they still uh, offer meditations and teaching and other activities uh, within the ageless wisdom. So they still exist. But 
the, the part that uh, left the Theosophical <coughs> Association was uh, Nils. We had a grand vision of uh, develop activities that would eventually create the esoteric school of Scandinavia that is, uh, that is uh, mentioned in the books of Alice Bailey. We were a very dedicated group and in principle we actually offered our lives uh, for the years to come and also a great deal of our economic, private economic resources to uh, manifest this uh, vision. Well, In the beginning, I, yes? Uh, oh, I, I was thinking, what, um, what I learned from reading your book was that this grand vision was not always easy. Uh, it, it was grander than it was able to be manifested. And it also brought up divisions, some divisions within the group as it went along. But, but continue with your story, please. Okay. <laughs> so there was not a question in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was only a cl clarification. That's fine. Please, yes. please, please do that. So uh, actually in the beginning the group had very uh, great success and we expanded all, all the time our activities. Uh, in the beginning we had to rent our premises and then as our activities became more and more, we wanted our own uh, premises, so we actually were able to buy uh, an apartment or premises in, in, in Copenhagen where we could both have our meetings and our activities. And uh, still we had great success, so these premises soon became too small and uh, we started looking around for somewhere where we could also have a kind of retreat center. So in the end we bought a farmhouse 30 kilometers uh, outside of Copenhagen and uh, had the intention there to create a retreat and conference center. And uh, to make this long story a little shorter now, I will say that uh, after seven years um, in this farmhouse that we call the Elves Farm, we had to acknowledge that our great visions uh, did not meet our capacity to uh, create the resources, both the human resources and financial resources, to bring this uh, vision into manifestation. So now the farmhouse is sold and the group is actually dissolved. So that was a very short, brief account of <laughs> the story of this group. Well, what happened? What, what, how did, what happened in, within the group that um, um, was a, a, a learning experience for everyone, both good and then uh, perhaps a little bit challenging? Uh, well, um, yeah, I, uh, there, there are some, of course, there are points of, uh, uh, that I want to, to, to make for you here tonight, the main learnings we have, uh, we have had. And um, I think that, that one of the, the main points I have to, to, to say is that this, this group work showed that, well, it shouldn't be surprising for, for uh, people who are acquainted with the esoteric teachings that development is a, <laughs> is a main learning. But um, actually all the aspects of the group were developed through these years. So if we talk about, for instance, leadership, we would go from having a very st one strong leader with one clear vision uh, into a phase where we had no leadership actually, or you could kind of call it a diffuse leadership, uh, until in the end we had a more uh, stable um, leadership that was not, that was conducted within the whole group. It was meditative consensus, we called it, and functional leading. So, uh, and, and our perception of leadership also developed. Uh, 
from 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 being subject to to one person and and doing the things that he wanted us to do to see leadership as a functioning group life that we all actually uh, contributed to uh, in line with all other kinds of functions in the group life so leadership was one kind of development that 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 happened during these years also our, our ways of teaching uh, changed from from you know lessons where someone is telling everybody how things are uh, to a kind of teaching where we where the participants were part of the uh, experiments and uh, we practiced all these things we learn about in the esoteric teachings we tried the methods and uh, experimented and, and the same goes for, for the purpose, for our organization and structure, the way we had our meetings and the way we meditated. Everything was under development during these, uh, this period. And a little later, we may talk about the psychological landscape of the group. Uh, and and I, can, I can show you how this aspect of the group life uh, developed. Uh, one, one point that you make in your book is about the effect that the group meditation had on the group. Could you say if, uh, something about that? Uh, yes. Um, I, can, I, can, I, I, I think I would like to come back to that when I talk about the psychological dynamics in the group. Okay. Uh, because that was a very, that was a very important uh, point at, at, at that time and, and it had some effects on the group life that I would discuss more in, in detail there. But I had another point that I would like to, to make, to, because development is one thing. Um, another thing is that, that an individual disciple nearing the path or on the path, we all know, will meet certain challenges and will have to develop uh, disciple qualities to meet these challenges like harmlessness, right human relations, and detachment, for instance. And, and, and it's a point for me here to say that, that the same thing actually goes for a discipleship group. The group as such will have to develop the same uh, qualities and will be met with the same challenges. So whenever you read in the books what is going to happen to a disciple that uh, are on the path, there are disciples that are on the path, the same thing will go for a group. And I will also demonstrate that a little later. And this is also, it is actually illustrated uh, in the book I have made, with, because I, there's a lot of quotes, especially from Lucille Sedokran's Nature of the Soul, uh, that actually describes the challenges that the individual disciple will meet. And I read that book at the same time as I was uh, writing uh, my story about the group. And it, it just struck me that, that whenever I read something there, it, it kind of fit in with, uh, with the processes we had been through as a group. Would you be able to give us uh, an example of, of perhaps one of the things that Lucille said that that was paralleled in your group experience? Uh, yes, uh, I can do that, I can do that. But, but actually before I go into that, I would, I would, really, like, I, I would really like to say that, that when I speak here today, I speak about the challenges of the group life and it may seem as if we had only trouble and challenges and, and, and um, all kinds of bad things happening to us. But actually, most of the time we had fun, we were friends, we worked together, we traveled together, we lived together, some of us, we met at least once a week. Uh, we were actually family, we were closer to each other than we were to our families, uh, uh, most of us. So, and we felt that we were part of something very, very important. Uh, it turned out to be something else, maybe, that we thought from the beginning. Um, but, but I think that, that the learning process is important. 
and not whatever achievement the group started out to manifest. But still, I want to point out that, that we had a wonderful time together and did a lot of wonderful work together. So <laughs> with this, uh, I, I, I can, uh, I could, you asked me to do something, Wendy, what was that, please? Repeat it. <laughs> uh, it was well. What were what were some things that you th thought you could you know, the group grew by that they the difficulties they ran into that prop that any group spiritual or non spiritual is going to have, but also particularly spiritual. What were some of the challenges? Well, well, uh, the the challenges. Well, in, in, uh, of course, in, in, in any group there will be challenges. We know that in, in all kinds of normal groups. The groups we, we are in, in our daily lives, in, at our workplace, in our family, in our spare time and so on. And all these kind of dynamics, they will, they will work also in an esoteric group. Who likes who? Uh, there will be disagreements between members of the group you will be dissatisfied with the leadership, there will be cliques and so on, and there will also be joy of cooperation and uh, common solutions and social uh, getting together and friendships and all that. All these things are going on in, in esoteric groups also. But what is special for esoteric groups is, of course, that the members are, are together about uh, aspects of the uh, ageless wisdom and that they have an intention to live and embody these uh, this wisdom actually and work uh, according to the principles that are described in the teachings mm -hmm. and uh, and then of course that that uh, on, on, on top of the personal development there's a group development the group is also a kind of disciple who has to dis, uh, to develop disciple qualities in its relation to, well, each other in the group, but also in relation to the world around. So the same thing, harmlessness, brotherhood, uh, attachment, and so on. And then there's another point, too. Uh, on top of that, you have to also take care of the differences in development that will always be there when you have a group of more disciple to meet in one group. So. Uh, this, I think, is special for the uh, for the esoteric groups. So perhaps I'm going to bring you back again to um, ask you about some of these uh, some of the. Uh, inspiration that you received from Lucille Cedarcross in regard to your group experience. Yes, yes please. I will uh, I will I will give you some quotes actually because I will I think I will um, uh, I will go a little more into the, the history in our group of the psychological di uh, dynamics. Ooh, and okay. um, and to start with that we I think we became a discipleship group when we started to meditate together. When you start to meditate together as a group, you or as an individual, you will actually be calling upon the higher energies and you call them into the group field. Mm -hmm. and, and the first effect of that was actually uh, a, a great upheaval. This is the time when we disagreed with the others uh, in the Theosophical Association and had to leave it and, and uh, form our own group. And actually also in relation to the International Esoteric Society, all kinds of disagreements and discrepancies uh, uh, arise. And I have to say that the way we handled that was not, it was not an expression of harmlessness and brotherhood and detachment. <laughs> Actually, it was more like chaos. And uh, <laughs> and I would like <laughs> and I would like uh, Alexander, if you would, uh, would if you would uh, come up with the first quote 
I have. No, this is not the one. So maybe you should take number two instead. Yes, I think this is the one. It is from Lucille Cedarcrans, Nature of the Soul, uh, lesson eight. No, 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 please. There. This one, yes. <laughs> uh, so I will just read it aloud. The impact of divine intelligence upon a probationary disciple results in three major effects within his consciousness and instrument. The first manifestation is that of apparent chaos. This is the result of an activation of old forms plus a mental awakening. At the same time, he is recipient of a flow of divine energies pouring down from the soul through the various aspects of the persona. As we have already discovered, this energy activates the desirable as well as the undesirable, causing a growth of all that lies within the total state of consciousness. In the beginning, the manifestations, whatever they are, seem to be in a state of upheaval, as one opposes the other. Hence, the first manifestation of intelligent activity in the life of an aspirant or probationary disciple is chaos. So when I wrote that, uh, this was exactly uh, what I saw that, that we were uh, experiencing. We, there was chaos, we disagreed, and we had to, to form our own group, and, uh, and we were not, uh, I can say, we were not harmless. Uh, there were all kinds of mails exchanged with all kinds of accusations and things like that. And, and uh, we were, of course, uh, uh, in a state of, of uh, thinking that we, we were right in all our uh, ways of seeing things. Uh, and this whole period, actually, beside the chaos and, and upheaval, also was a factor that created a very strong unity within the group, because it was like us against them or something like that, and we had no time to think about what happened on the, on, 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 on the group level uh, of psychological dynamics. Everything was in accordance to what happened uh, outside. Uh, in our world there, so so this is this is one of the things that I where I where I found some evidence in the in Cedar Crantz that this is what happens to a group as well as a, a, an individual disciple. And so when a group at the time you were of course meditating together, and what you're saying is that the the incredible uh, increased flow of uh, of spiritual energy coming into the group actually caused caused a, a, a sort of chaos within the group. Yes, that was the immediate result. And and as it said in as as it said in the in, in the quote, um, this this uh, this energy that that pours in offsets both the uh, both the good and the bad things. Uh -huh. so, so what okay. happened immediately were all the bad things, but but a lot of good things also happened. It just happened little by little, and it was not so evident from the start. So as we as we kept on meditating together, uh, uh, some of all these chaos and upheaval, of course, uh, stilled off, and and a lot of other uh, aspiration and and all kinds of ideas uh, uh, how to how to make our work uh, better and so on was also a result of, of, of the meditate of the meditation together yes mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I, maybe I, I have some more quotes uh, that that shows other parts of the um, of happened with the inflow of energy. Mm. Maybe I should I should share them too. Um, Alexander, can you give me the next quote? Yes. So again, I will read aloud. 
When the human being begins to glimpse the vision of his soul and to be impressed by the wisdom of his soul, his first reaction is egotistical. He thinks of himself as different from the rest of humanity, and little realizing the error of his way becomes more dangerously separative than when he was a persona without thought of soul. This individual has availed himself of more motive power, so to speak, which activates the motives already present. Thus, spiritual ambition, which is a drive for spiritual attainment as a separated persona, stirs its head, and the aspirant begins to think in terms of a position of power, of wide influence. Instead of serving those whom he is dedicated to serve or responding to their needs naturally, he is conscious only of himself and his need to satisfy his ego. He wants to be somebody in a spiritual sense. This is kind of harsh, I think, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but still uh, uh, I was clearly able to see that, that this also happened in our group. It's, it's, it's glamour, of course, and we all know that this happens. And uh, when I look back, I can see that this also happened in our group, as it would for any individual disciple. And you're not aware of it while it happens. It just happens. It's, it's just there. And it's only when you look back, you start to see that, that maybe we could have done things differently. Maybe we are not the most important people in the world, and so on and so forth. And, um, and actually, there's another quote to go with that. So, Alexandra, if you would give me the next one. This is the two, two quotes I have done already. They are the Silk Cedar Crunch, but the next one is uh, actually Alice Bailey from Esoteric Psychology, uh, talking about service. Service is usually interpreted as exceedingly desirable, and it is seldom realized how very difficult service essentially is. Service is frequently regarded as an endeavor to bring people around to the point of view of the one who serves, because what the would-be server has found to be good and true and useful must necessarily be good and true and useful for all. Service is viewed as something we render to the poor, the afflicted, the diseased, and the unhappy because we think we want to help them. Service is frequently an indication of a busy and overactive temperament or of a self-satisfied disposition, which leads the, its possessor to a strenuous effort to change situations and to make them what he feels they should be, thus forcing people to conform to that which the server feels should be done. Again, a bit harsh, but, 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 but also true. So, so these things uh, also start working in a, in, a, in a group that starts meditating together and call upon these energies, because these are the first visual results. It's not the good that comes forth in the beginning. Actually, it's, it, it's all, the, all the old thought forms that come up and that then uh, have to be to be worked out in some way. Um, when you speak of this service, are are you, did, are you uh, saying that that the group became very involved with how they could uh, help others in terms of outreach or something like that? Well, our service was the activities we wanted to 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 uh, to actually do. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the teaching, the seminars, the, the schools, and so on. But, uh, but what I'm talking about here is, is more the inner motivation, the thoughts we had of ourselves and our importance in the world. So, so I still think that, that, that the service we rendered, it's, it's service, but it is mixed with all these uh, uh, mixed motives. That, that is what I can see, and, and, and I think that maybe when I mention it here, it is because it, it's something you have to be very aware of when you are a group, that, that uh, in your relation to other groups or to, to the surroundings, it's necessary to, to be aware from the beginning that we're only one group, and others may have other ways of, of uh, 
becoming souls or or whatever it's it's not it doesn't have to be exactly our way uh, I think that's that, that's that's just important for me to mention that mm-hmm. you, you you have to to have that perspective that uh, <laughs> that uh, that others may have other ways of, of, of uh, performing their service, which is exactly as uh, good and and right as the one that we are doing. Well, how d- I, you 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 talk a lot about the group growing through mm-hmm. these dynamics. How in what way did they grow in, in, so that they they really um, came to terms in a very a more positive way um, with for example the glamour of importance um, etc I think actually at, at times does it, it it's its own work because uh, uh, because as we worked on and as we meditated on uh, these mm, this this way of looking upon us uh, 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 the group, Phased out somewhat. We, 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 so so instead we 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 turned to to just uh, do what we as a group thought that we should do. Uh, if we that what what happened in the group beside that is that that we uh, we kept meditating together and and when you meditate together, every time we we come to a group meeting, we would meditate together, we would send love around in the circle, not only from, not, not, not only around the circle, but also to everyone in the circle. And we were also supposed to do that in our uh, daily meditation. It was, we were supposed to meditate daily or at least regularly uh, uh, and link up with the group field each time we did it. And doing that for about 14 years, uh, it makes a difference, it, but it's only when you look back that you can see that 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 actually we we changed our ways of communicating with the world around us. We did that as a group, but we also did it individually. So meditation is is the absolute must uh, in this kind of development, I think. So it, it, what I understand then is that through 14 years of group meditation, where you really were concentrating on bringing a new dynamic of love to the group field, you actually were able to help the group as a being and the individuals to move past some of their, uh, let's say, psychological patterns that were not helpful for the group or leading it in a way that wasn't serving everyone. Yes, yes, that is really uh, what happens when you do this meditation. And then, of course, there were also other uh, um, other ways. Uh, uh, I would say that that self development, the individual self development, is also a very important tool in in the group work uh, because. You have to you have to be responsible uh, for for your own development and for uh, the challenges that you have. Everyone in the group did not have the same challenges. Uh, I can only speak for myself, I think. But but my challenge, for instance, would would be something about ambition. And and uh, uh, too much ambition from one person in the group. May may kind of tip the balance, and 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 it, it doesn't bring a good thing into the group. With if 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 one person is ambition either on for himself or for the group. So so you have to you have to find out what are your own challenges, and and uh, you have to work to to uh, solve these. Um, and, and, and we did that. What? Um, now, did, did, did individuals sort of come to that on their own, or did the group discussions kind of lead to um, uh, t- 
talking about development of self and awareness of one's patterns, um, psychological patterns. Oh, good. oh yes, we, we we talked about it in the group, but but we also but but it is actually a personal. Uh, uh, you you have to. It's your own responsibility to work with your own issues. <laughs> yes, but right. of course, you can bring it into the group, and we can talk about we could talk about it in the group if if we wanted. Uh, uh, we could, but but mostly on a group basis, we would uh, look into the. We would see what 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 kind of 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 uh, not challenges but uh, advantages that that each of us would bring to the group work. Um, yes, sir. We would do that yeah. on a group basis, uh, yeah. and then we would work with our challenges in uh, within ourselves. Or we would we also we also had in our group um, soul therapy. It's it, it's a kind of therapy that is uh, mentioned in the Cytokrine's Nature of the Soul, and and we use that kind of, of therapy also. We used healing, and we used all kinds of psychological processes, both on the individual level and on the group level. And all these things, together with meditations, would help us eventually to to move out of these uh, challenges and 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 to gain a better understanding on how to relate to the world I around. I suggest and, we now uh, we'll open the floor for the questions from the uh, audience and comments. Yes, we can do that if you want. Uh, I, Wendy, do you have one last question or something like that? No, I'm ready to hear questions from others. And in order to you uh, ask your question, uh, please uh, use the function raise your hand, it's on the control panel and also you can share your questions or comments on the uh, question section of the control panel. So please we would uh, love to hear from you. Um, there is a question, there is a comment or question from Sharon Deep. Uh, to what extent did esoteric astrology serve in defining the relationship both in terms of interpersonal relationships and in terms of the cosmic wave of energies uh, befalling the group in and of itself? I, I wonder. Thanks so much for your sharing. Much appreciated. Um, we had a few members of the group that would uh, that were especially interested and and uh, in the as we had astrological uh, in in astrology and uh, we experimented in many ways with uh, with bringing in the astrological energies in our work. Um, uh, we, we did it. Uh, I just want to. S we did it in terms of, of of trying to see what are the astrological uh, signs, what 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 are the energies for the moment, and then we would uh, then we would try to to bring that into our uh, meditation and into the to the. To, to whatever work we were doing. Uh, also, we had developed in the group developed um, an astrological kind of therapy that we could uh, that that we used for some time. And you know, whenever someone wanted to develop something like that, we all helped. <laughs> so we were all guinea pigs, and and he would. Uh, uh, start uh, working with uh, the astrological energies and 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 this kind of therapy. Uh, so so this is we had it in mind, but I was not an expert on it, so I'm not actually the best one to 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 ask about this. <laughs> I hope at least it answered some of your question. There is another question from uh, Celeste Vermette. Uh, 
what form has your personal practice taken now that you are no longer uh, in a group? Uh, my personal practice, I still meditate daily. I think that's it. And then I, of course, uh, uh, I, I study. Uh, I still study and I especially study uh, Lucille Sedacrans, which is very easy for me to, to, to work with. And then I have a very small group with, with Wendy and we see each other now and then and, and uh, have Skype conversations uh, also uh, in a way of studying the teachings. How many members constituted an average a yearly group and why did you finally dissolve to yourself? That's the question from Carrie Woodward. Uh, at the time we started the group we were 17, then we increased the number, so when we uh, bought the, the, the farmhouse uh, south of Copenhagen, we were more than 20 people and when we uh, dissolved the group uh, we were about 11. We dissolved the group because uh, uh, it was impossible for us to keep the farmhouse. We didn't have the finances to keep it and we also needed money to actually build the, the, the rooms for meditation, for accommodation and so on, uh, and we didn't have that money. Uh, so, so in the end, uh, we had to admit that, that, that actually this, this, this vision had to be, to be uh, abolished and uh, in the, as while we were selling the farm we, we still hoped that we would continue as a group but I think it's it's very hard because this in many ways may have seemed as a failure to, to uh, many of us and I think it's very hard to return on such a failure and sit, sit down and say okay now we start to do something new and important so uh, so I think this is the reason why we uh, in the end decided to dissolve the group Um, there is a, another question from Celeste uh, asking, what words of wisdom would you offer other esoteric groups that are working today? Go for it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I mean that because despite of all these uh, challenges, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, and I would also my advice would be to to take up a study not all kinds of study and not all kinds different kinds of study find one thing one book one one item uh, study it and learn from it and discuss it within the group. Uh, you don't have to take a whole book. No, no one can 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 take in these books, a whole book, and read it chapter by chapter by chapter. But if you concentrate on one chapter, you might find very very much wisdom just in one chapter. Uh, read it, meditate upon it, and discuss it uh, within your group. That would be my advice. I think as as a, as a group we. We took upon us too much, uh, and this may also be the reason why everything got a little diffused, and and it was hard sometimes to see yourself and your contribution to the group. From from what I understand too, after reading the book, though there was a great learning from this. It's like, uh, so when you said go for it, it was like <laughs> you're going to go into a, a, a place that um, an opportunity to learn something that 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 you would be you would just not have if you didn't. And um, just from what you have said, there are many things that um, the group learned. Maybe you could say a couple of those or talk about that a bit. 
Um, well, we learned on all levels, I think. Uh, as I said in the beginning, we, we learned about uh, leadership, uh, that, that uh, but actually, leadership is a, a, a process, like like everything else. You go from one place, and the, and then you go into to something that is confusing because you don't know what it is. And then after some time, you find a, a, a way how this will function for you as a group. I don't say that everyone should have this should do the same as we did, but but as long as you work with it, as long as you are uh, attentive of leadership as, as something that belongs to the group life. Uh, uh, I, I think it's important to, then to open up to what is good for our group and, and, and the group of people we are, what would work for us. Um, I see um, some name in the, in the list of attendees now who I know they are also through the been through experiment of group work and group life and uh, is still are so it would be interesting to hear others so if you would like to share please just raise your hand and we'll unmute you um, there is a, another comment from Sharon Deep so many of us are interested if not passionate about building community looking for the right time uh, the right resource the right people the right everything. Any thoughts of that? No, I think you <laughs> uh, because you know the right time, the right resource. Uh, we thought it we had the right time, the right resource, but we turned out uh, not to be uh, like that. Um, so 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 really no. You, you have to find out with your group uh, what is the right time and what is the right way of doing it. But, but a, a practical advice would, would be to be aware of when these energies come in, you, are, you think everything can be done. You know, when you go out and look uh, at a new house, you only see the possibilities and you forget that it costs and, and that it takes time and that it needs manpower and all these things. So, so don't be too ambitious. At the same time, as you should, uh, of course, uh, go with the energy uh, when you when you have it. <laughs> I don't know if that <laughs> meant anything. I've noticed for a few seconds there was a raised hand f uh, from Ira, and then it disappeared. So, if you still want to speak, please uh, raise your hand again. And we will unmute you. Okay. Yes. Hello, Ira. Hello, everybody. Uh, there was something coming to my mind that um, about what Ipa called the failure of this group, and uh, I, I sense there's still this um, this feeling of failure somewhere over there it lingers lingers with the words I've heard and, and somehow I just need uh, I felt the need to say there is no failure in subjective work it's not possible that you fail with the work you have done um, this may be something that you already be clear about but um, regarding to all all group dynamics to all groups that are active and uh, in any kind of process, uh, I don't believe that it is really possible to truly fail. You may not reach the goal that you have set to yourself. You may not achieve eventually certain things that you dreamed about when you started or whatever it is that was on your plan when you went for this. Um, but you see the subjective, I believe that the subjective work that you're doing in meditation, in the group process itself, only the group alone, the group process alone, is an achievement. So I think there is no failure possible, and um, these these um, feelings of resentment that 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 I catch up or that 
probably may eventually be only reflections of my own personal failures eventually. Um, but this, what I'm feeling here, I, I think is not really, um, as I said, it's not possible to fail subjective work, I believe. That's all I wanted to say. But this may be nothing new, so that's why I've raised and, and lowered my hand and thought, because I thought it's uh, maybe something that you've already been worked through. Well, well, thank you very much for your uh, for your words, and I really, really agree with you. Uh, I, I I was afraid that that there would be put too much pressure on failure when I when I would go through all these challenges, uh, and but but actually, is it sad that we had to split up the group? Uh, yes, we had a fantastic vision, and no, because maybe we had actually fulfilled the group's mission. Maybe our mission was not to create an esoteric school of Scandinavia, but to do exactly the experiments and, and the experiences that we have done. And we are now, everyone in the group, working with all these uh, ideas and ideals that we have uh, strived to, 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 to learn together. Uh, we use them in our daily work. Uh, in our daily going around other people's people, and 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 maybe uh, also by reading this 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 story of the group, others can be in, inspired to say, well, even if we do not achieve what we what we thought we would, then we have done something good. So thank you very much. You're so right. Uh, I will unmute uh, Iris Spelling. Hi, Iris. Hi, Sasha. Thank you, Eva. Cool. I just, I, I just wanted to add that um, I think you really said it when you said perhaps, or I don't know how you said it. I, my memory is is the word learning, that maybe that was one of the 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 great purposes of uh, this experiment. Because I think that we're not used to really working in a true group fashion, and and maybe right now it's just that too is very limited. We don't even know uh, because many of the groups that we've worked in or with in the past have have had this leader and the authoritarian. Um, aspect to it, and and we don't really know how to work together we're learning that and and just just the doing it uh, I think we have a long way to go so just doing it is is starting is is going for it and um, and it there is a blindness I think when when you jump in and you you were obviously really trying to create a new type of group so but but it it does change, and um, it's interesting to to learn and to see. It's just I think it, the process is so important for us as humanity at this stage as we as we evolve. Thank you. Yes, thank you, and and I would like to add that I have. Many places, uh, uh, Lucille Cedarcrans in, in in her uh, books uh, state that whenever we uh, experience something, whenever we uh, learn something, it's actually then then it's available in some kind for others to. It's out there in cyberspace. So so the solutions we have found to 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 some of the challenges we met. We work through them. We find out what to do. We work with it, and now it's actually maybe a little easier for others to tap into this uh, learning and 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 somehow uh, use it in in their own group work. Yes, absolutely. I I think you know we need to think of the larger group, the group of groups, mm -hmm. um, and the whole. Like you're saying that it. Nothing is lost. It's all. It all helps to advance. So yes, you're right. 
said that. That's a wonderful comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a, a chain of uh, comments uh, c uh, coming now, and uh, I don't think I will be able to read all of them. Uh, uh, just thank you all, and let us re uh, remind and uh, remind ourselves there is no such thing as failure. Uh, I. Uh, another comment. I agree with uh, Irie. You have no, not necessarily to know what it is you have succeeded in doing. You did it. Uh, another comment. Absolutely agree with the opinion. No failure. Um, there was a uh, there was a question from Nancy uh, Seifer. Eva, thank you for being so honest about your experience. My question to you would be: How do you personally feel changed by the experience of 14 years? Okay, that's a great question. Um, um, maybe I'm not myself so aware of, uh, of, of of the changes, but I have experienced that people around me think that I have changed. Uh, there would come people to me at my workplace, for instance, and they would uh, say to me, oh, you're always so calm, and, and, and could you help me with this, and could you just say something, and and uh, put your hands on my neck, and, and things like that. So so it, it, it seems that, that maybe uh, it's it's more like like other people being aware that 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 something else is going on in in me as a person. It, it, it's difficult to 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 say uh, myself what has changed because it has changed over such a long period. So so I would tend to think that I have been like this always, but I'm sure it's not true. <laughs> I would like to add from uh, myself. I I was lucky enough to visit uh, the farm of your group, Eva, um, in 2009. You know, I was amazed with the, that radiant atmosphere uh, that was there, and I um, we definitely attributed it uh, to the work of your group, and so. Uh, I agree with all the comments that people just shared that it's, there is no such thing as failure. We can think about it to have a very high goal for ourselves, but our work might be much more simple, and that work is just to be in that time, in that space, radiant unit of light, and just to radiate the light and love, and who knows what was the results of your radiance for that period of time that you were there. And it was definitely an amazing space. It's your voice. Space. It's your voice. It was a lovely place. And I'm sure uh, uh, Alexander has shown you pictures uh, on the screen uh, from, from this place we had. It had a beautiful nature around it and we're sure that there were lots of Divas and angels and all kinds of helpers uh, in, in the surroundings. So, yes, you're right. It was a nice, wonderful place. Uh, I think now we are uh, getting close in time to for the meditation. And I want to thank you, Eva, for this sharing and uh, contribution to this overall process of the group initiation that we all as one big group undergoing through and as a humanity and this experiments like your uh, group undertaken have a big uh, contribution to that no matter what it seems to for us <laughs> thank you yeah thank you very much for letting me in <laughs> So uh, we will go into meditation. Uh...
uh, I will say that the meditation format I have chosen for the meditation today is very close to the format we used in our group work. Uh, and on this occasion, the group consists of everyone participating in this webinar, and you should see us standing or sitting in a circle. And in the end, when I have set the great invocation, then Alexander will do the ohms, because we need another voice to do that. But please make yourself ready for meditation. Become physically relaxed and comfortable. Send love to your physical, etheric body and tell it gently to relax. Become emotionally calm and serene. Send love to your astral, emotional body. And let each emotion become quiescent and peaceful. Establish a point of focus in the forehead, in the ashna. And realize that you are an integrated personality, focused in your mental nature. And sound a silent ohm of integration. Now focus your attention in the cave, in the middle of your head, and invoke the attention of your soul. Spend a few moments in silent contemplation of being aligned with your own higher self. Now link with every member of the group by sending love from your heart to the heart of the person right to you, creating a circle of love. And use your imagination to do that. And now, again, use your imagination to link from your heart with the heart of every member of the group, creating a lighted field in the middle where all the streams of love meet, the group field. By an act of the will, step into the group field and become one with it, stating, I am one with the group, and the group is one with me. As a group, we see our group standing among all other disciples and disciple groups that together form the World Servers Group. And we send love from our group field into the network of World Servers and World Servers Groups. And we acknowledge each disciple and each disciple group for whatever contribution they have to the overall betterment of world conditions. 
remembering that on the of the soul we all endeavor to work in accordance with the divine plan. And now, together as a group, we lift our consciousness into the hierarchy and take our place in the aura of Christ. Realize that we are now standing in the planetary soul, the center of all love, the center of consciousness, in the midway point of the planetary antakarana, between Shambhala, where the will of God is known, and the core of the earth, the center of all substance. And contemplate here the seed thought of the sign of Aquarius. Water of life I am, poured forth for a thirsty world. Water of life I am, poured forth for a thirsty world.
and now refocus in the group standing in the aura of Christ. Visualize that the energies from the sign of Aquarius stream forth into the group field, stirs it into concentric waves of energy that spread beneficially out from the group field into the World Service group, into the whole of humanity, and into the animal kingdoms, the plant kingdom, and the mineral kingdom. See the whole planet covered in the light of this energy. Now refocus in the group field. See that we step out of the group field and return gently to our own selves. And sense how the energies of Aquarius penetrates and irradiates our whole being and shines forth to everyone we get in touch with. And we end by sounding the great invocation. From a point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From a point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little human wills the purpose which the Masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Alexander.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Wendy. And please join our next uh, New Moon webinar on February 10th. We'll together we'll start preparing for the cycle of Pisces. And uh, please, on February 20th, join the Pisces Solar Festival webinar. Let's stay connected. Thank you.